I found I like to call this meeting the Clark County Board of Commissioners to order. As you can see tonight, we're a little short. We still have a quorum though. Let you know that uh, uh, Mr. Holbrook is uh, was here earlier. But, uh, his health is a little bad, but he is taking taking his night off. And uh, Commissioner Falls is on a mission trip, and uh, he left on Saturday. And I expect to be back next week. But uh, uh, we do have a quorum, so we'll still conduct the business. Again. Uh, next. Item would be our Pledge of Allegiance and Invocation. We're going to call the County Clerk, Jerry Melton, to do that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for this day and thank you for allowing us to come together in this place to conduct the business of Cleveland County. Please help these commissioners to make decisions that will be in the best interest of the citizens of our county. My prayer is that all decisions tonight will be pleasing to you. For it's in your name I pray. Amen. 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 I see two elected officials, both being made of this. If y'all would like to stand and be recognized, please. Thank you all for allowing me to time on your agenda. 
Um, what I wanted to share with you tonight is this uh, your request and your approval and support of some changes to the partner's bylaws. Um, just to give you a quick um, background, when you agreed to the merger last year between Pathways, known as Partners, and Crossroads, we established the governance structure for, for Pathways, or for um, Partners. And the governance now is a 26 member board of directors, and the board members are broken down by county um, based on population. So the individual county's population as a percentage of our total equates to how many members they have of the 26 member board. Uh, and, and that's driven by statute, um, you know, what some of the particular requirements of the, how the board should be structured. There's a general statute that talks about the board of directors. And so when we merged last year, we were in full compliance with the general statute at the time. Um, within the general statute, there's a requirement to have certain <coughs> categories of people. Only currently about four or five such categories of people. Um, for example, somebody with business expertise is required. Um, somebody that's uh, interested in the, the welfare of children is required. Shortly after we merged, that state statute was changed, and a couple of things impact what we need to bring before you tonight to request your approval on changes to the pathways of board of governance. One is there's now a limit um, based off on state statute of 21 members on the board, um, a local area authority board. So we have 26 members now, the new statute requires us to have a maximum of 21. So that's, that's one of the things we have to come into compliance with. The second is those few categories that they said have to be represented on the board has now gone to 13. So there's 13 required categories of individuals that have to be on the board. Um, currently, if you look across the 26 members of the, half of the partner's board of directors, there's about five of those such categories that we don't have represented on the board. So to get into compliance with the statute, we've got to go from 26 to 21. And then we have to also decrease by five more and then go and recruit people that fill those other specific categories. What the Partners Board of Directors um, did in their, their bylaw changes is left the same methodology in place. Of the 21, um, the, the goal is to distribute those based on population the same way that the 26 were. So Cleveland County would have the same percentage of the 21 that they had of the 26. Um, so that wouldn't, there wouldn't be a change there. The other thing that the Partners Board voted to keep constant is to have one commissioner from each of the eight counties. Um, the new statute only requires to have eight commissioners, um, one total, um, rather than one per county. The part of the board of directors felt it was very important to continue to have each county allowed to have a commissioner, if that's the, the choosing of the county commissioners, or to have a, an individual designated by them. So eight of the 21 seats are county commissioner seats, or if they appointed somebody to, to work their place. The other 13 would come with those individual categories. Of the categories, um, one person, one individual can, can serve in two such categories. So for example, if there's, there's a requirement to have an attorney on the partner board, and there's a requirement to have somebody interested in um, the developmentally disabled population. So you could have an attorney that's got a child with a developmental disability, and he or she would count as two of those 13 requirements. And that would free up large spots for the commissioners to be able to appoint from. So that, that would be a good thing on the front end. On the back end, that would create a big problem because if one person, if that attorney with a, with a disabled child is, is serving, and he's one of the 21 members, and he or she, or he in this case, resigned from the board, then you're going to have to fill that same spot with an attorney with a child with him. That's going to be difficult to do. You could find yourself having to, to fill, free up another spot to get that vacancy paid. So um, what Partners is, is, is requesting tonight is, is your support and approval of the bylaw changes um, that we sent to you that basically says we have to come into compliance with the state statute. We have to do that by October the 1st of this year. Um, several appointments around the 26th are up for renewal anyway, but they're on one-year terms that are set to expire on June 30th. So that'll free up the opportunity to start that transition process. And then we'll plan on completing that before October the first. Thank you, Ben. Uh, commissioners, any questions? I have some questions. <clears throat> Looking over, I understand how you came up with the form of a population per representative. I guess my question is of looking at the population versus the cost. For a person cost, for example, Gaston County is 952000 Their cost per person is 
excuse me, four dollars fifty nine cents. Okay, Burke County, ninety thousand people. Theirs is a dollar fifty eight cent. Ours is ninety eight thousand seven hundred ninety one thousand, which is eight dollars and six cents per per person. This is twice as much as any other county out there. So if we're looking at per population, why hasn't that come into effect? The uh, as far as the spending on the county dollar, the board doesn't. That they they leave that to management to, to decide how the, the, the allocations from the county are to be spent. So we work with the various county managers on, on using that. So so the board that doesn't really get into the allocation of the funds um, of our total budget. Our total budget is about three hundred billion dollars, um, and the county money collectively um, is probably three or four million. So you're saying that you and the county manager work <coughs> on this one line. Well, um, the county money that is given to us by a county stays in that county. So Cleveland County money doesn't go to support any other county services. So there's a there's a big discrepancy in in service dollars given to us by just the county. Dollars. Our funding is really made up of three categories. Medicaid is by far the biggest pot of money that we deal with. The second category is state funds, indigent funds, and then trailing way far behind that is the third category is county money. Medicaid and the state funds go across all eight counties. The county money doesn't go across any county. So for well, and, and looking at looking at some of that, and, and I guess the question is, the money saved the county or the money provides service for the people in the county. Right. But then several years ago, we lost a lot of businesses out of Cleveland County that didn't meet the criteria when they went and combined the LEDs and what am I saying it right? Um, the requirements for the LEDs and so forth. And some of our county people who had businesses in the county law and they went to Gaston County or somewhere else. So even though the county money stays in the county, it's still going out of the county if we spend it somewhere else. I guess my question is, is there some way we can create those jobs back in Cleveland County if we're paying a larger portion so some of the money will actually stay in the county. It, there may be something there hasn't been as much of that as is as, um, as far as Cleveland County businesses shutting down and even though there might have been some consolidations at a corporate level um, the jobs are still here in Cleveland County it might be that the corporate office is headquartered but the, the payroll which is really what where these, these dollars are spent on, on paying individuals to serve most of those are Cleveland County residents in other words, if I, if I had been working for your company here and you combine with one in Charlotte, I still work here, those tax dollars are, are in effect staying local to the extent that they're paying for workers that have houses here and shop here and live here. But that, that's something I know you and Eddie have worked on, and I would like to see work on some more. We, we, we do, because um, one of the things when we, we work, you can see some traffic. Cleveland and Gaston were closer together, particularly when you, when you when you give the value of buildings that we get from Gaston County, they give us about 150,000 dollars, 150,000 square feet of building space. But Cleveland has always been giving us the highest amount of dollars. And then when, we, when we use that, when we talk to other counties, because they want some of the stuff we're doing in Cleveland County with those dollars, and we're like, well, if you we provide the, the dollars, then we can provide some of the same types of services. But we'll continue to work with the county managers to see what we can do to equalize that. I believe you're asking that we approve the revision uh, of the comp comp revision of the composition of the board per statute. Yes, sir. I think there's a, a, a resolution. There's, I think there's a, a draft resolution that we had proposed the language for. So it's just okay. approval of that language. Okay. Uh, Cleveland, Gaston, Ardell, Lincoln, Surrey, and Yadkin counties on July 1st, 2012, 
by merging the former mental health partners, Crossroads Behavioral Health Care, and Pathway to LME Area Authorities. And whereas the Board of Directors for Partners was established at the time of the merger to be a 26 member board distributed proportionately according to the population of each, indi each individual county as a percentage of the combined merged population. And whereas North Carolina Session Law 2012-151, Senate Bill 191, codified as NC General Statute 122C-118.1, enacted new requirements for area authority boards in both size and composition of members and requires area authorities to be in full compliance with the new requirements no later than October 1st, 2013. And whereas the Board of Directors for Partners has thoroughly discussed and explored various options to come into compliance with the statute, and to maintain fidelity to the will of the commissioners expressed at the time of the merger. And whereas partners, board of directors have modified its bylaws to maintain an equitable dis distribution of members among the eight counties that comprise the organization. And whereas partners request that the modifications to the government structure be supported by the respective boards of county commissioners. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Cleveland County Board of Commissioners supports and approves the modifications made to the governance structures of partners that is in compliance with North Carolina General Statute 122C-118.1 and will work collaboratively with the partners board of directors to appoint the members with the requisite backgrounds and qualifications to maintain compliance with state statutes adopted this 12th day of April 2013. The resolution is before you at this time by a motion to approve the resolution. I make the motion to approve the resolution for the revision of the um, partner's uh, behavioral health management.
things they got going, you know, just places for the kids at PC, the uh, diabetes clinic, and so forth. They do a, a very good job of what money they've got. And uh, if there's no more comments, I will make the motion to approve the resolution. Of that, um, we had over 
2,000, uh, 2000 uh, people provide uh, input to us. Uh, we wanted to know what residents care about the most. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we covered the 14 county area. We wanted, to, we wanted to also use that information to develop what we call our indicators, uh, which are really just evaluation criteria. So as we look at issues uh, and options to address some of those issues, uh, we needed to get evaluation criteria based upon the input we received from folks in our region. Uh, what what uh, we identified um, based upon the input we received with our with people were concerned about and uh, I don't think there's any big surprises here. People are concerned about jobs, uh, economic development, employment, poverty, transportation, traffic, walkability, infrastructure to support that growth, managing the growth and sustainable development, uh, and uh, schools, education, and social work. So these were the words that were used to describe concerns by the people that came to these meetings. Uh, next slide. Uh, the, uh, we also also ask people for regional features that best illustrate the places of value. Uh, and this is important. We'll talk a little bit uh, about that later. But people talk about the fact that town centers are important. Uh, not a big surprise where we're at right now. People in uh, communities like Shelby value that sense of place, that unique sense of identity for their communities, and they wanted to build, grow, up, uh, grow back that unique sense. They did not want to look like every other community. They wanted their community to grow based upon the values of that community. Uh, parks, greenways, uh, state uh, parks, forests, and preserved land, of course, rivers, streams, and lakes, and neighborhoods with housing, office, and property <coughs> so that people uh, can walk if they choose to live in the land that they can walk to uh, certain features. Uh, and uh, further descriptors included that they were looking for uh, friendly places quality of the place that is dynamic and during authentic fresh and again unique to their community. Uh, quality of place, ease of access, and sort where that recognized the historic value. They didn't want to lose uh, their uh, their links to the to the past in their communities. Um, so um, what what uh, what we're in the very beginning stages of this initiative right now. But some of the immediate uh, results and future results are shown here. Uh, one, of the, one of the items that's provided to you tonight and we provided electronically uh, to you and to others in the region is a county level economic assessment report that was really the first piece of this effort is identifying uh, economic strategies for the region. And then within those strategies, what are those areas that we want to begin to work on together? One of those areas that has been identified is career headlines. And that's really a regional platform to identify on one hand, what are the skills required for the jobs that are going to grow in this region? Uh, so we have, we're, we're collecting data from major employers throughout the region, identifying their skill levels, and then putting them in, providing that information to the trainers and uh, community colleges, colleges, and others that provide training so that they can build programs to support developing those skills. And making that also that information available to job seekers, both uh, institutional, uh, those, uh, those that help job seekers on an institutional basis, but individual basis too. This would be, uh, and, and we hope you have this, this product available up and running, and, and it's going to be available to folks throughout your, uh, throughout your town, throughout the region, so that community colleges will be able to access uh, this information uh, and determine what are the uh, what are those skills required if your uh, major employers or all employers will be able to input it so that your your brothers will also be able to look at this and determine what skill sets should they be looking to to build for their own personal purposes to be able to get the jobs that are available now or will be available in the future. Uh, so that's underway right now. We mentioned regional freight. That was something that was talked about. Um, that uh, as we grow, we want to be able to make sure that we can uh, freight throughout the region. Downtown redevelopment strategy. Uh, reinvestment in downtown has been very important. Uh, again, it's very important for a lot of communities because they have a lot of infrastructure in place. They have sometimes they have 
housing in there, they have roads and they have water and sewer and uh, schools and being able to make sure that those remain viable and maintain the historical sense uh, within the community is very important. We're looking at how uh, strategies to help with uh, addressing that. We're going to have a compilation of the region, even the existing land use data that will be available to communities throughout the region and assessment of housing needs. One of the things I was identifying the economic development board was uh, the fact that the regions that uh, make sure that they have housing available to meet the needs of current and future employers is going to be very important. So we want to know what those housing needs are. We also know that um, in, in this area, but in other parts of the country, um, uh, populations that are aging are looking at different types of housing that may exist. So understanding what those needs are, making that information available to communities and counties so they can use that uh, to build their housing strategies will be useful as well. Um, so again, beginning stages of this, uh, one of the one of the, uh, most immediate uh, public engagement opportunities is the, what's called a regional reality check. Um, this will be just one event on June 4th. Uh, we're looking to have 400 people from throughout the region people that are influencers. So we're looking for people from government, we're looking for people from the private sector, we're looking for people uh, from uh, uh, non-for-profits uh, that uh, all contribute to addressing issues across the region. And we, uh, we will have a very structured and uh, structured process to gain a better understanding of where those folks think that growth will occur, one of the, the challenges for that growth. So uh, on a, on a sub-regional basis, they'll be looking at for the growth that's projected, where will that growth occur in terms of housing, in terms of jobs, where will that occur? And we'll use that to again, build a model for a regional basis. Following that, there'll be a series of, again, community growth workshops throughout the, throughout the region. Um, so we would want to have some in your county as well, where we receive public input somewhat on the same basis with a little bit more information that we've been able to gather in terms of what those projections will be. Uh, the, uh, in 2014, mid to late, we're going uh, to we're gonna then be looking at options for different regional growth scenarios. Uh, and we're looking for input and feedback, what people see as disadvantages and advantages of different options of growth uh, based on Finally, we're looking to have a, a final growth framework in late 2014 at the end of What's important about these, this effort is that what we come up with uh, is going to be vetted, if you will, in two different ways. First, uh, uh, there will be a, uh, what is called a policy form, which includes uh, elected officials uh, that have been appointed by uh, their, uh, their, their county board and city council and will include them and they will be looking at recommendations for, uh, that have come from the different work groups that are, uh, that are building uh, the, the different models. Uh, and uh, they'll be better to there and they'll be, uh, that, that form will be uh, essentially approving which ones will be finally for a set of recommendations. The second, Later, uh, then, if you will, will be when it comes back to you uh, and to others because you will have the option of looking at all the recommendations and saying those would be helpful to us, these are other recommendations that you will not be. You can choose and select which ones you find uh, to be appropriate and useful in your, in your community and your towns. Um, So that, uh, that's basically what we're doing. Uh, as I mentioned, um, we have two mayors here, and uh, they have not seen this presentation before either. Uh, and so I thought it'd be good for, uh, for them also to identify their expectations and some of the issues that they're looking to make sure they're addressing this time. So uh, you want to invite them up now? Jim, I have a question. How long have you guys been, I mean, when did you start doing this? The, the first uh, the first meet of this of the open houses started um, probably about 
uh, in uh, Great Fall, Ohio. And you've got the first reminders on one side of Greg Kira. <laughs> Just kidding. About one minute. What would a town like Earl hope to get from this wide ranging 14 county regional connectivity project? What I hope to get is some of what we have gotten already is knowledge from the small towns that have been attacked by the megapolis in Charlotte. Uh, you know, we believe, and I think a lot of uh, planners think that within 50 years that uh, Charlotte will come up 85, maybe Shelby will meet Daphne at, uh, at, at the river. So small towns have a unique challenge. Where do we go in that type of environment in the next 50 years? When you come from a small town where mayors serve 25 and 30 years and council members 45 and some are 80 years old, you take the long view. So that's what we're trying to look at and learn some of these things, as well as make connections with folks in other towns, counties around the 14 county region who can help us invent some wheels. We don't have the resources to invent all the wheels we need, but we can ride on some of theirs. And that's what we hope to get out of this as we look at what makes our region change. As a special process mentioned, uh, city of Shelby, we have not seen this presentation, so I really can't deny and kind of learn more about the process. I will say, just to kind of follow up on some of what he said, I have attended some of these meetings about six months ago to uh, some of the kickoff meetings. It's real impressive. The thing that impressed me the most about it is that it really is about hearing from the public change of ideas. Uh, certainly what I hope we can get out of this process to hear from our constituents, to hear from our citizens. And I've, I've attended some of the workshops that have been, been held here in Shelby. And I've been very impressed. We've heard a lot of good things or a lot of bad things. It's kind of, it's kind of good to hear it all. And that's, that's what I've really liked about this. And the thing that's impressed me about this is that uh, it's, it's not somebody from the outside kind of coming in and trying to impose their ideas and values and what they think is important. It really is an exchange of information and thoughts on how best our region can grow. Because the first meeting that I attended about six months ago in Charlotte was, I think it was Mayor Fox mentioned that whether or not we like it or not, we're going to grow. We tend to think that Cleveland County is not going to grow, but I think we all hope it will. I believe it will. But I think it's important we be in dialogue with our neighbors in Gaston County and Lincoln County so that we can understand what we all, uh, how we can work together to kind of improve our, improve our, our region as a whole. So thank you all for letting me speak. And, and again, uh, I've asked Mr. Prosser to make this presentation for our city council because we haven't fully sort of signed on to the process yet. But we've all been observing and participating, but we certainly want to. So thank you. Any yeah, I, I, I tended to help you meet to start with, and I wasn't impressed. I'm going to tell you why. Because most of this stuff is set on population varying the areas we explain to start with. The greater the population, the more programs they need. Okay? You're saying that you're going to tell me, tell us all these things we need to do, but somebody's going to have to pay a bill. Okay, we've looked at it, we've had conversations with Lincoln and Gaffney County. Lincoln and Gaffney County is similar to us. Mecklenburg County is, is something different. You know, with their population, their rail system, their things they've got going. That's why Bill and I and Eddie, we had a conversation with Lincoln County today. We're trying to form a partnership with these three counties. Okay, and uh, this ranges down to Rock Hill, Mecklenburg, Charlotte, and uh, even to make up your board to start with, the majority of your board connects the future is Mecklenburg County, down in South Carolina, so forth. And like I say, listening to what some of them wanted, they want a lot, but they want it for the big cities. And I think that we're just going to be a number that they need to get something going. I may be wrong. But you can prove me wrong, you know, I've been wrong before. But like I say, I, I attended some of the meetings, and like I say, each time we were there, they were referring to the heavy populated areas. What do we need to do in the heavy populated areas? Just like you talk about community college training people. We've got those programs going now. They're
are connecting with the other colleges. We, we're working with the job. We can partnership to land jobs. I think some of this is duplicating what we're already doing. You know, that uh, we're already doing some of it. And at some point in time, somebody got to pay a bill. And that's my question. As you do the survey, where's the money coming from to do the projects? And uh, I know we're over a small town, but still again, if you're going to do projects, somebody's got to pay the bill. And that's my question. Are we going to be paying the bill for the larger population areas? Or would the larger population area share the money with us? And I, I don't think so. Uh, Chair, uh, commissioners, if I may. Uh, first of all, the concerns you raised uh, are absolutely on track. Uh, we, we want to make sure that this is not all about uh, the heavily populated areas now. This is about the fact that every part of this region is going to grow at a different rate and it's going to grow at different needs. But there may be some common elements where we can work together to develop systems that work across the board on a regional basis to meet those needs more efficiently. So uh, your discussion about Charlie Regional Partnership and training programs is a great example. We do not, uh, we are not duplicating their efforts. In fact, one of the directions from our board, and our board, by the way, is representative of the entire region. We actually have many more, the vast majority of our members are delegates uh, from outside of Mecklenburg County. But uh, getting back to your issue, we, we uh, one of our partners in this effort is the Charlotte Regional Partnership. And we work very closely with them to make sure that we're developing and helping them develop products that uh, work across the region and give them more value uh, across the region. There is not place right now, a system that allows Charter Regional Partnership to gather that employment data in terms of what the skill requirements are and to translate that into training programs that can be calibrated so that whether you're getting trained in Cleveland County or in, uh, in Manson County, you're getting the same training for those skill levels. And that's what we're attempting to do. And we believe by developing these programs on a regional basis, that can be used throughout the region. We're uh, really allowing counties of scale to occur. We're not reinventing the wheel for every county. Uh, and we're working collaboratively and not in competition in the area that, uh, where there is, there is a common, uh, common interest. If we do this, uh, for example, the training program alone, the, the headline career headlines, that's going to allow us to market more effectively throughout the region, and it's going to put Cleveland County in a more competitive position. We firmly believe that, and, and our the consultants that work on economic development say that's the case as well. Commissioner, what I would say is what, what is before us tonight is a memorandum of understanding, not necessarily a funding mechanism. So we could actually agree with the memorandum of understanding and, and see how it plays out in, uh, for the future, but it is your pleasure. Uh, there's a memorandum, uh, Madam Clerk, uh, I'm not going to ask you to read three pages. If you just enter it into record, Mr. Chair, I'm going to ask one question. Anyone wants a copy of this? Yes, sir. I'm going to ask one question. How many of the counties are participating? How many counties or how many areas are you going to talk to? In North Carolina, excuse me, Chair. In, in North Carolina, Gaston County has opted not to participate at this level at this time. Rowan County has not taken any action. The rest of the counties are participating in North Carolina. I, I don't have an updated count. But this is something we have to act on tonight because we're missing two of You can take it if you want to push that. I'd make a motion that we table at least the other two commissioners a year. We have a full board, so we have a have a motion to the table until all commissioners are present. I'll second that. Mr. Allen, any further discussion? Question for Jim? You're done. Uh, all in favor, please raise your right hand. We'll be back with Jim. Thank you. Yeah. 
time there was the amendment to the destination creek capitalities. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, commissioners, on uh, December 18, 2012, uh, we approved the loan uh, to Destination Cleveland County. Uh, this loan was to be repaid um, back against uh, their current pledges. Uh, and also that loan was contingent upon uh, an additional loan that they received that would be uh, used to complete their project. And also uh, one of the requirements was that they receive a uh, EDA grant extension. Uh, we have, they have applied for that extension. Uh, we have received notification from EDA that the grant has been extended until December 7, 2013. Um, our county attorney has uh, amended the uh, lease agreement. Uh, there were three amendments uh, to that agreement. There were a couple of other corrections that were requested by Destination Cleveland County. Uh, first uh, amendment would be the uh, completion of the renovations that all renovations shall be completed and the uh, center to be located in the leased property shall be operational uh, no later than December 31st, 2013. Uh, the second amendment that was, uh, the next two amendments were requested by destination Cleveland County, uh, that their hours of operation initially uh, stated that it would be for, uh, eight hours would be uh, free to the Cleveland County residents. Uh, but my understanding that they uh, initially would plan on being open only 30 hours a week. Uh, so therefore, um, what they're asking is that we designate one day uh, of free uh, admission to Cleveland County residents. So the amendment would state, if you agree, uh, that the center will be open to the public and fully operational for a minimum of 30 hours per week. Uh, the lease shall designate at least one day the center's operation, operating schedule for free admission to Cleveland County residents. Uh, the third amendment is really more of a technical uh, change. Uh, initially, the uh, name uh, of the center was, uh, within the lease agreement, was the Earl Scruggs Center, Songs and Stories of the Carolina Foothills. Uh, that appear, appears in the original lease, and they're asking that the name be changed uh, to an updated name of uh, Earl Scruggs Center, Music and Stories from the American South. Those are the only three changes to the lease agreement. Uh, all the terms of the original lease agreement dated March 18, 2008, shall remain in full force and effect. So we were waiting for the report from the uh, EDA, EDA, and we received that uh, about a month ago that they had been granted <coughs> and the uh, attorney is cleaning up language on the lease agreement. Uh, do I have any questions at this time? Questions of the Chief Summer Authority for who you're supposed to listen. Well, by, by that day. By that day, so that's, that's all we got for. Any other questions? I have a motion to approve the changes in the lease agreement. Question, one day to be open can be a sound labor. Yes, I, I don't know that that date's been chosen yet. It could be someday during the, at least one full day during the week. Okay. Commissioner, do I have a motion to approve the lease agreement? I'll make a motion to change the lease agreement to that. Right. Commissioner Hutchins? I'll second that motion. Commissioner Allen, no discussions, questions? Hearing none, I'll pay for your page right hand.
section of the Carolina Trail Trail with its design of the bypass and uh, the map that we've passed around, uh, tried to superimpose the center line of the bypass onto the Carolina Trail Trail National Plan to show you which uh, areas of the bypass uh, could be coordinated with that trail. Uh, Lake Norman RPO has also supported this request and we've included a copy of their resolution in your agenda also. Uh, to give you some background, we adopted the Carolina Trail Trail Master Plan back in January of 2010 and it includes about 106 miles of proposed trail in our county connecting linking popular destinations throughout the county and to adjoining counties. The uh, resolution located within the jurisdiction of Cleveland County, and whereas Cleveland County adopted the master plan for the Carolina Thread Trail on January 5th, 2010, and whereas this multi-purpose path along the First Broad River will pass under a proposed bridge on the US 74 bypass and extend along the southern edge of the proposed right-of-way. And whereas implementation of the Carolina Thread Trail master plan will be impeded without design considerations for a multi-purpose path within the right-of-way. And whereas Cleveland County and City of Shelby have adopted comprehensive transportation plans, as well as other land use, bicycle, and pedestrian plans that reference these accommodations. Now, therefore, we resolve that Cleveland County Board of Commissioners respectfully request NCDOT to consider design accommodations for the Carolina Thread Trail as long as construction will not be delayed. I'll tell you, that's what I was going to do. 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 Motion to either decline the bid or 
to accept the bid and authorize the sale. Commissioners, you've heard uh, the town manager's recommendation and Chris Green's uh, comments on the property and uh, asking us to accept the bid for the five hundred dollars. Chair, can you ask a question? Yes, sir. It's not like we're asking all the questions. It's not like we're doing to you. <laughs> anyway, you said the nine thousand dollars tax back is nine thousand something. So it doesn't make any difference what this sale is not considered a. Right. This would this would be considered an alternate transaction sale. So the tax value will stay the same. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. What we're trying to do is get your property back on the tax sure. 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 I just want to make sure it didn't go off the tax value. I make the motion that we accept that bid. Other discussion the question of this green and can manager? Hear none, all in favor, do we raise your right hand? Thank you. Uh, Lysa Chairman, uh, I was contacted recently by Johnny Carswell, who's the Vice Chairman of the Burke County Board of Commissioners. Uh, he was notifying uh, us that uh, Western Youth Institution in uh, Morganton, which has been in existence since 1972, um, that facility uh, houses a medium uh, minimum custody of male inmates between ages 13 and 22 to keep them out of the adult correctional facilities. Um, according to uh, Governor McCrory's 2013-2015 uh, budget that was released recently, uh, he proposes to close this facility in January of 2014. Uh, one thing that Mr. Carswell was uh, informing me of is that one, obviously, it's very important to uh, Burke County from their standpoint because it's almost 350 jobs that they'll be losing. Uh, I talked to the Sheriff's Office recently and asked them um, what their position was in, in this, regarding this facility and they said that they were in favor of obviously keeping the facility open because uh, the number of um, violators and offenders uh, are growing uh, in this age group, uh, 2013 and 22. Uh, also, uh, the vicinity of being so close to Cleveland County uh, is obviously beneficial to us that we have to transport uh, these offenders back and forth uh, from Cleveland County to Burke County, which would be obviously more advantageous to us versus potentially having to transport them to facilities that may be in the eastern part of the state if, if there are other facilities of this type in the state. Uh, so we do have some level of interest uh, in this facility remaining open. Uh, and uh, they have asked uh, all the counties within this region, uh, not only Cleveland County, but Couple of other counties surrounding Burke County to support um, this resolution. So, I agree with the motion. So, I'll have a second to give her a break. Uh, it's a resolution supporting the Western Youth Institution, whereas in uh, 1972, uh, the state of North Carolina. Constructed Western Youth Institution in Morganton, North Carolina, to house close, medium, and minimum custody male inmates between the ages of 13 to 22, so as to keep them out of adult correctional facilities. Whereas it is unlawful to house male youth offenders who have been tried and adjudicated as adults with adult inmates, and whereas uh, WII currently serves as the diagnostic facility for adjudicated male youth offenders. Whereas it is not in the best long term interest of the youthful offender or citizens of the state of North Carolina for the youthful offender's current housing and rehabilitation program to be changed. And whereas WII staff members have faithfully and efficiently accomplished the mission of the NCDPS Division of Adult Correction by promoting public safety through the administration of a fair and humane system which provides reasonable opportunities for adjudicated offenders to develop progressively responsible behavior. Whereas Governor McCrory's FY 2013-2015 budget was released on March 20, 2013, uh, proposes to close the facility in January 2014. And whereas closure of this facility would have a devastating impact on youthful, youthful offenders, WII staff, 
the economy of the surrounding region, and therefore be it resolved that the Cleveland County Board of Commissioners, acting on behalf of all parties to be affected by the proposed closing, ask that its state legislature, legislative delegation take all steps available to them to vigorously oppose the closing and ensure continued funding of the public facility, rehabilitation programs, and maintain the current staffing level for Dr. This is the second day of April 2013. Ask a question. Um, do we currently have, or are you, are you using that facility? Yes, I didn't get a number of how many, uh, but the sheriff's office did tell me that they have transported vendors uh, to this facility. I'll second. 
place to be ready.